We're going. Okay. Uh, uh, session 14, if you can believe it or not, of uh, Funnel to Freebooters. We are definitely well into Freebooter territory. Everybody's approaching level four. <laughs> um, we just wrapped up some um, lengthy downtime. We're now in late spring, just like in real life. Um, at least in Vermont, it's still late spring. It's not quite summer yet. Um, in the village of Saltwall, let me get us back. Let us give us some geographic reference here. Yeah. Dun -dun, the lovely Venati village of Saltwall, uh, where you have made friends um, with the village and its leaders. Uh, and it is here where Paviki has started her journey on um, becoming um, perhaps a magician of some kind, but has begun to tinker with uh, unnatural forces um, to see what um, lies beyond the veil of reality. Um, Mwirin has been brewing some, or not brewing, but uh, mixing up some um, special uh, powder that makes people forget things. Um, and uh, Taimi um, took a scouting trip out into the realm of the River King um, to see what was up with um, the big fella um, into whose, into whose, onto whose turf you are soon to trod. Um, and I think the cart is all loaded up. Now you're, you're planning to take this wagon with you, right? Along mm -hmm. with the, the beast, the, yeah. uh, not, not the beast beast, not Isselmot, but with the, um, the beast of burden. Itzy, right. Um, so the cart's all loaded up, uh, and you're about to, uh, set off. Is there any business? Um, so Quan, let me, okay. So a quick recap on uh, a couple of things that happened. Um, that gold bringer guy, Gulam Goldbringer from Uzbear showed up in town and was curious about where the, uh, the, uh, the word giver and the word keepers had gone to. And, um, his next stop is Arland Weir. So Kwan, the elf, um, has already left to kind of get ahead of him and let everybody in Ireland we know um, what the story is. Um, so that's happening. Yes. Uh, I actually have a note here that I wanted to ask Gulam Goldbringer about cart route to Rayuna because I realized that we got here via scaling cliff faces and Correct. we were going to have to find a way to get back via carts and whether he's familiar with the routes. Yes, uh, he, north. he has never been to Reuna. Um, he has only been, basically, Saltwall is the furthest uh, uh, east he has ventured from Uzbear, and he's never been north. Um, okay. you, you're, you, the mention of Reuna, it's the first time he's heard of your village, um, your mention of it. So he says no. And on that note, uh, as per your request about wanting to know a little bit of the lay of the land, here is what you know of the world. Ooh. What the? Yeah. <laughs> fog of war. <laughs> <laughs> or fog of knowledge. Wow. So nice. I found a really awesome map making program that was really, because uh, I could I could have drawn it by hand, you know, but of course, but like I wanted something that was a little more um, formal somehow. Um, but anyway, this is, I don't know how this lines up with your imaginary version of where you guys were, but this is based on, um, I, I have the maps all drawn out by hand, just like very, very sketchily. So I just plugged them into, I um, adapted them into this program. So you can see Rayuna there in the upper, upper left where you started your adventure. Wow. Um, there's the cave of the beast. You came down through the highlands. And then right here is what, uh, Taini is talking about. This is a huge cliff with um, a really enormous expansive waterfall. And that is, um, that's where uh, Topias broke his leg. Um, and that is the spot. And then here, this whole river valley here is the realm of the River King. Um, there's the boundary stone. There's the ruined hut you came across. Um, and when you, when Taimi thinks back on this journey um, and the cart, which is a pretty sturdy cart. It's a pretty, you know, you know, you know especially under Paiviki's inspection, right? Paiviki's a carpenter and Paiviki sees that there's like some good corking crafts, craftsmanship gone to this wagon. Um, 
Uh, so the rivers are high because it's spring. They're not as high as they were earlier, but they're still pretty high. Um, but having gone through this journey, um, you're, you think that you could probably get the wagon all the way back to the waterfall by getting it up that cliff. Um, it's like a Fitzcarraldo problem, right? Like it's like a how, what, what gear, how would you, it's a pretty big engineering issue. Yeah. Um, unless there's a way up around the cliff possibly on either side. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, that being said, the cart, the wagon, you know, this going will be relatively slow. Um, and you may face some problems, you know, just crossing overland. There's no road. So you're going to be, you do remember this area. You came down on the, um, the western side of the river here. That's all, it's like rolling grassland. So that seems like pretty doable. But, you know, there's things like mud to worry about if you encounter um, any kind of boggy areas. Um, so, but then the main obstacle, yeah, that you're thinking about is that, that big cliff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we just, we just don't know. I mean, maybe the, like the, the basin, the, the bottom of the cliff, maybe to the west it connects with the motherwood and we can travel through there to get back. We just, we just don't know. Um, but I think that we have so much good stuff, good, useful stuff that I would hate to just like throw the proverbial baby out with the bathwater and just say, oh, we'll just leave it because we can't figure it out. Um, well, the question is too, like, uh, here's another thing to throw in the mix is um, Rayonis seems like a kind of like a dangerous home base for us right now. Mm hmm. So maybe we don't even need to bring all of our stuff <laughs> back there. Um, no, we have enough cohorts that we could like set up camp in the cave of the beast or somewhere adjacent and like to, the three of us can go into Rayuna. Right. But I guess I wonder if we need to bring all of our stuff north and you know, what are we going to do? <laughs> are we going to try to liberate Rayuna? Or are we going to um, uh, just head off to another adventure somewhere? Yep, that's, a, that's definitely an important question. Yeah. Because, I, if, I don't know, I'm just, we could struggle with that cart for a while. and um, But then again, we can bring a lot more stuff with the cart too, especially all the loot we're going to find in the River King's cave. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, but, knock on wood. I also think we can slow us down too. I mean, I think we were pretty ready to like just get out of Isomat's cave. Like, I think that there's a chance that there could be a lot of good stuff there, especially now that you have peeked behind the veil. You know, there might be stuff that you understand of importance about the the wizard's home and workshop that we maybe didn't understand. Formally. That's true. That's true. Um. But yeah, I, I also don't know if we are ready to liberate Rayuna. I mean, there's only two, if it's still the same, there's only one word giver and two word keepers. And I think that we can pwn them probably, especially now that we have like comparable gear to them. Yeah. But I feel, I get the impression that Rayuna has a much, the, like the, the claws are much deeper than they were in salt wall and that we were able to like be preventative. Well, we're also surrounded by two or there's, there's a town to the North and a town to the East that are not under Corkine control. So that's, that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The town uh, to the North is like straight up rebel. The town to the east has worked out an agreement with the Corkine that the word keepers don't set foot inside the town, but they have right. a trading, they have a trade arrangement. Hmm. We could do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess the main question is, so when we were coming down the falls, I was under the impression that there's a, there's kind of like a, a wide way to the west that we could go through the woods potentially instead of doing the falls. Yeah, you could possibly, you could maybe, yes, that, that is a possibility. You, you'd have to explore there to see what you can find, but that's definitely a possibility. 
I think I remember giving that to you as an option, right? You could go straight down the cliffs or you could head west to see if there was another. Yeah. Um, I think that's enough to make me want to bring the cart. Yeah. I mean, if, if all else fails, we could abandon the cart and tie some stuff onto that critter. True. And True. take her with us or, or yeah. just take the stuff and let her go back to the feral yeah. living. <laughs> I don't um, know if she's able to be uh, undomesticated. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Weird? Yeah, I'm. I'm happy to bring the cart and see before we um, decide it's too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we'll find something, and What's then. Um, um, at Maya is also gonna get send you guys. Um, uh, a goat rider escort to the boundary stone. Oh, that's so very nice. Of her. If anything went wrong with the wagon before then, or up up until that point, you know, the the Vanati could sort of take it back, or you know, they could escort the animal back at that point. Or so. I mean, that's you know the least kind of problematic part of the trip, but that there there is that possibility as well. So there'll be. Mm -hmm. an Wasn't there a river that we had to cross that we got washed away? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do you mean, let me think, yeah, now, on the way here, right, on the way yeah. to, yeah. yes, um, that was here, that was, that was in the river, it's, it's quite wide and strong there, now the water will be shallower now, because it's literally, it's like four weeks later, yeah. a, whole, a whole month has gone by since you guys did that, so, um, it's, you know, and you're you're so you're all well versed in the natural world. So your expectation is that that would be a much easier crossing at this point. And it was, there was a ford there, like the rocks have been built up to allow for crossing. And um, I guess it would make sense that you would have Gulam Goldbringer would have brought news of that as well. And he says that he and his his men had no trouble crossing. Did you have something else you were thinking, Donna? Um, no, I, uh, I guess I was, I had forgotten what were the towns, are the towns on the map that you said were either liberated or were under trade agreements? They're not on the map. Um, the, okay. there's one here and there's one up here. Cool. Let's give it a try. All right. Um, yeah. Anything else? I, uh, no. I had a question. Yep. Um, I think I wanted to ask, I think you wanted to ask Locke about the stone that Bajnik brought back to the village. Yeah. It seemed like when we first got there and they lit a fire behind it that it, and it, it glowed. Yeah. Did it glow in some sort of did it have some sort of magical radiant, or was it just the light of the stone? Um, the, um, Locke uh, says that it doesn't have strong magic, but it has um, it has the ability to hold light. So, like after the bonfire went out, the stone itself glowed. Oh. Um, but as far as Locke knows, and as you've discovered, Locke does not have full grasp of all. <laughs> Um, Locke, you know, had some problems figuring out some of the stuff that you showed to her. Um, uh, but Locke's, Locke's kind of um, explanation of the stone is that it can hold uh, natural light. Um, so that after that bonfire burned, the stone was basically lit up all night long. Okay. Pretty brightly. That's, that's good to know. And I was wondering if she has any ideas for a signal that she could send to Rayuna if we if she needed help. <laughs> if if they oh if you guys need help, if I mean we sorry, need if help, Saltwell needs help, or if Saltwell needs help, if there is a way that we could signal each other. Um, across that distance, um, she is not strong enough to. Um, for instance, weave weave of force would be the the spell that would be might might be most useful. She's not strong enough to. Um, to reach that distance. Um, so your best bet would be 
uh, probably a goat rider messenger. Yeah. Who could cross that? As you guys know, those goat riders can cross difficult terrain pretty easily. Yeah. So they could probably make that run. Let me think. One, two. They could go one. You know, it's kind of like the same way you guys went to Sakagara. It's just, it's like, but rougher yeah. terrain. So it would take a roughly 48 hours of travel for those goat riders. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Full, full speed. Well, send a goat rider if something comes down. You need help. Or send a um, a bright fog. <laughs> <laughs> Either if you see a bright fog, you'll know that something's yeah, something's up. Um, yeah, so then that's 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 agreed upon. They will send a goat rider for help if. Um, um, and you guys describe how you know once you get above the waterfall, you follow the river up, and Rayona is the only settlement on the river. Um, yeah. There was one other question I had for her. Remember she had that little mallet that she struck the the bracelet with or or no. She struck mm -hmm. something with, yeah. The little vibrating mallet. I was wondering if she could try that out on the the two amber gemstones that we have. Topaz. Oh. Topaz. Yeah. To see if, if she can sense anything about them. Sure. Beyond their um obvious prettiness. Because we've kind of been the eyes of those that like demon god or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you brought those with you, right? Yeah. And they're each, I think, fist size. They're pretty big. Mm -hmm. Um. So you show those to um, uh, Locke, and she um, uh, she just kind of nods her head, matter of fact, and um, she doesn't need anything special to tell her that those are those are stones. Those are, I mean. Okay they're obviously to you guys are some kind of gemstone and maybe to lock a gemstone is just a stone but lock very very easily can see that they're mundane there's nothing okay unusual about them um but she does ask where you found them yeah and i tell her about the cave of the sorcerer and uh i describe i can't even remember what it looked like but some kind of terrible effigy of a monstrous face and uh and how they were set in the eyes and the mouth i think something like that yeah so she's very um oh, how did rock react um mm. Mm, this is a bad place it is a good thing you left it um you yeah. you think of returning we're curious to see if there's anything there that we had not um, noticed before and I worry about that sorcerer that we left in a hurry after um, we battled him and killed him <laughs> I wonder if if he's if his body is gone <laughs> then we may have more things to worry about but the way that he laughed when I killed him made me think that maybe I shouldn't have been so quick to just leave him there mm. Yes, it, it is good to check. Um, one who bends the world to the to his will, as this person has, it's very possible that they can defy um, death itself. And with the with what is indicated by this this face, this carving, and these stones, and the room where you found it, and what you've described, um, tells me that he is in contact with the demon world and this cannot be good. Yeah. He's meddling with forces beyond human control and it's very possible that these forces could uh, grant him some sort of unlife. Did he find, did you find any of his writings? Did you find uh, his book of spells? Uh, yeah, but we didn't know what we were looking at and we left it behind in Rayuna. So I'm hoping to recover it. Take, take, take care if you study what he has written. 
yeah, I'll be um, extra choosy when it comes <laughs> to. Uh, I'll take it all with a grain of salt. I do not know what this means. <laughs> <laughs> a grain of salt in <laughs> in salt wall is everything is with a grain of salt. Um. Um. Yeah. So she and she um, wishes you well and hopes to see you again. And, um, and in fact, Locke kind of, as you guys are kind of all loaded up at the gate, Locke sort of, um, sort of does a whole blessing of Mukata on you. And um, all the villagers have turned out. Durbin's there, Palvinder and Jaspender and Upajai and the um, little girl who is kind of, um, Juan's not there. So Atmaya is actually holding the little girl and the little girl is kind of shyly waving goodbye to Mwirin the little girl whose name I'm forgetting right now. It was, um, started with an A. Right? Eliza, maybe? No. <clears throat> anyway, so she, yeah, so she's there to, to wish you off as well. Okay. Can I give her a hug? Sure. Yeah, she's, she's, uh, um, she's totally shy about it, and then you get close and everybody kind of chuckles, and at my uh, kind of moves so that you can, um, and then she jumps down on the ground, runs over, and gives you a hug, and then runs back right away to Admaya because she's so kind of shy. Aww. But it makes her very happy. I have it written down as Armin. Armin, that's it. Armin, that's what it is. Thank you. How's her Elvish? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says goodbye in Elvish. Um, whatever that is. It's pretty basic. You know, they didn't have a whole lot of time, but she knows a few words. And she sells, she's, she's got the roll of the tongue down. She's, 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 her pronunciation is great for uh, how old she is, eight year old or whatever. Um, okay, and you are setting out for the boundary stone. Um, uh, yeah. He wants to thank Locke and, uh, and I'll bring you um, any new treasures and um, curiosities that I find some at some point for you to uh, puzzle over. I look forward to it. Um, and Paiviki also asks um, Atmaya if she has anything that she wants us to bring to uh, Tini. Oh. Um, yeah, right, right, because you guys brought the tree, right? We did. Yeah, what would be a good token of appreciation to take back? Well, she gives you... Um, like shells? Yeah. Um, I think what she does is she gives you... This is for... And, and you, you describe Tinny as the kind of elder of your village. Um, the, I guess Tinny would be the equivalent of um, of Admaya in Rayuna, and um, so she gives you a um, a conch shell that's a horn. Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, which they use one you know whenever they need to like warn the village or call a call a council or whatever. They use this conch horn, a kind of a similar thing. So they give you one to take back. And that weighs, um, it weighs one, but it's pretty bulky. Um, so I'll go in the wagon. And okay. um, she also gives you, um, if you want, if you have room to carry it, she would like to also send along um, uh, six clay uh, jugs of honeymoon. Oh. As a, as a gift. How's the cart looking? <laughs> I haven't really. Let's see. Looked at the. I think we were getting tight. Cart wait, wait, you got you got two 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 capacity to go. Wow. Yeah, you're loaded to the. Did, did Myron add um, stuff to the cart? No. Um, I don't think Myron had much weight to add. That. Okay. There's also, I can't um, 
so Pius and Annika are with you too, so they can carry schlep some stuff. Yeah. So, for instance, if Tapias and Annika each uh, wore, we got, <clears throat> yeah, we got short bows, short swords, and chainmail. Yeah, yeah. So I think. Um, in fact, let's just make a note of that right now. Um, so let's give. <clears throat> well, I, John, you added um, most everything we got from the camp, right? To, yeah, this is this party. is everything we wanted to take from the camp. Um, yeah, I we lost the only thing we we don't have is we lost a quiver because of a bad roll that I made um, during my scouting trip with um, on, uh, Anika. Do you have any arrows left for your short bow? No, because she she lost those too. So oh. yeah, I could. but I, I'm sure would uh would the salt wallians, the Venati give us some? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that could either be in your adventuring gear. You could convert adventuring gear into arrows as needed. I think. Oh okay. Um. Um. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum. All right. So if we give Anika and Topias, of who would you like one of them to wear some chainmail? That would pull two weight out of the... Yeah. Um, I feel like Annika is probably going to be more in the fray just because um, to Topias is still fresh off his injury. Yeah, okay. And Topias, I also... I didn't write it down, but I had given him a hatchet before. Yeah. I guess right, they need I'm to right have right. their own list of... Yeah stuff yeah just so we know who has oh wait we're wishing about anika a crossbow right yeah i'll get yeah anika a crossbow and a bundle of boats okay. bolts bundle of boats <laughs> all the boats all right so let's take this off of here Minus three, minus four. Are you messing with the kitty right now? Yeah, I'm messing with the wagon. Um, oh. Oh, and it's automatically adding it up. Yeah, so that just opened up. Uh, I was going to say, are you in a different document? Because I think Jan and I are looking at. Oh, I put a shared version of it in the um, folder that I linked you guys to. Maybe it's my copy of it? I can see Topius and Annika. Yeah, I just added those. Oh, okay. Well, you can totally track that. I don't need to do that if you want to track it in your. Okay. Um, let me just do that. I um. That sounds great. Yeah, so once you've geared those guys up, you have enough room in there for the um, the shell, the, the conch shell, and the, um, the honeymead. How much weight is the honeymead? It's one weight per um, urn. I lost track of the uh, Zoom meeting. I can hear you guys, but I can't see anything. Oh, no. I think I pressed, I don't know how to go back to the picture you have a mac yeah can you do like a four finger swipe up on the track pad oh that's interesting <laughs> never try that did it work i said <laughs> have to make the right sound effect no maybe i don't have that enabled um can you alt tab on a mac Yeah, you can, I think. It would be command tab. It's right. only alt tabbing the um, carton kitty thing. Huh. Um, um, maybe I'll just try command. to re rejoin. What? It would be a command tab. Oh, there you are. Hey. <laughs> you <guys> are <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Got some a Mac user. Mm -hmm. Power Mac power user. All right. Um, 
So, uh, John, just let us know when you're ready to go. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just tinkering. OK. <laughs> um, all right, then. Away. Away you go from Salt Wall. Um, the weather has been sort of flawless lately. It's all blue skies and um, cool breezes off of the, off of the bay. Um, and you leave um, a waving um, crowd of Venati uh, as you head west um, early in the morning. Um, and let's roll. So this first, this first uh, leg would be to the Boundary Stone, accompanied by your two goat riders. And um, that is a safe territory. So um, let's have, uh, let's have um, we in roll. 2d6 plus 3. Okay. Oh, dang. Um, that's okay. Seven plus three. Ten. Yeah. Uh, you can leave like in good time. Um, anybody can keep company if they wish. Anybody have any any uh, chat they want to have with each other? Mm -hmm. Uh, not not yet. Okay. Um, yeah. I think it would be good to have a chat, but I can't remember what we were chatting about, uh, what, what to talk about exactly. Um, maybe Paiviki uh, can ask uh, Moiran about visiting with the elves. I think we did this already a little bit, but. Like now that you're on the road at just like, what was it like when we were back in Arlandweir? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, keep company as in like chatting as you're, as you're hiking along kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And making, the, and making the move like uh, rolling to see how it goes. Oh terms, yeah. Yeah. In terms of your bonds. So yeah, Paiviki is curious just to, to, uh, to ask about the Elvish villages and, um, you know, what it's like, partly because she's feeling a little bit like a stranger in her own village um, with the Corcane there and uh, just wondering what the other ways of living are and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, if, um, if an Elvish village would be a good um, home. And uh, so great. So that's the subject of the conversation. Go ahead and, and yeah. uh, Roll the dice. Do you have any bonds with um, Weirin? I have one. Okay, so roll the dice and add one. Okay. I rolled a nine plus one, so ten. Conversation Ooh. goes well. Um, you can summarize it. So uh, Donna, if you want to say what Weirin, um, you know, you can summarize what how, how Weirin responds to that. And like, if it if the conversation went well, like, how do you know, like, what kind of outcome um, Paiviki was looking for? Um, well, the, the the mechanical effect is that um, Paiviki gets to gain a bond with you, and you gain a bond with them. Or um, one of Paiviki's options would be to refresh uh, um, all marked bonds with Mirin. So, is that bond you have with Mirin marked? No. Okay. So basically. At the end of this little conversation, Mirin and Paiviki would each have a new bond with each other. Um, so all that, that's just the subject of the conversation was what Paiviki brought up. And you can just say whatever Mirin might say about that subject. Um, and it just, Got the it. conversation just goes well. So that just means that like, you know, it's a nice chat you guys have. Okay. Because if it went bad, does that mean you don't get, oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. So if um, Paiviki had rolled poor if the conversation didn't go well would they still get the mark get a bond to add or not on a seven to nine um you would choose one from the list and the list is you get a bond with the person the person gets a bond with you or you refresh your bonds with that person on a I six see. or less um you would get xp but the conversation would not go well and no bond 
And no bond, that's right. Okay. Okay, no, I get it, okay. Um, I'll say that I remember uh, uh, Elvish villages to be like a nice, a really good place growing up, um, but feeling like, also having that feeling of like outgrowing the place and so wanting to leave was, probably like a uh um might be an outcome but i certainly understand what Pyviki is feeling um and i think i think if Pyviki wants to live in an elvish village that'd be awesome for her i think she'd really enjoy it i think she would like learn a lot um and yeah, whatever whatever she was interested in that's new or different, um, she'd certainly be able to find something like that there for at least a time. And do they have people like Locke who are always learning? Sorry, a place of learning, a wizard learning magic? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. For sure. Elves be wizards <laughs> from time to time. OK. Um, great. So you guys each make sure you write down a mark a bond, or not mark a bond, but you get a new bond with each other. Um, you've managed to cross the river with uh, no problem. Those wheels are nice and high. Axle is strong. Um, the goat riders are on hand in case anything goes wrong, but it all goes swell. And then by um, the end of the day, you have reached the boundary stone, uh, which is where um, the first night's camp is going to happen. And the goat riders are going to stay with you uh, all night. So it's time to make camp, uh, and everybody eats rations. Oh, I. I have no idea how much food we have. <laughs> I just assumed that they gave us a full supply of five rations. For sure. You guys are all, uh, well, yeah, I think a full supply is actually a week's worth. It's seven. Um, um, so uh, if you all want to put that on your. Yeah, so each, each of you, each of you, including Anika and Tobias, has a week's worth of rations from Saltwall. Okay. Um, and that is, uh, it weighs one. And um, so everybody can mark that. And if somebody could track that for um, Tapias and Anika, I would appreciate it. Yeah, I'll put it in the sheet. Thank you. Um, so that's like salted fish. And I mean, on this first day, you each have a little. Um, uh, um, like wooden bowl of um, porridge that Locke actually made and put some local herbs in there. Um, yeah, so there's a variety, and there's like these um, honey cakes as well. Okay, and then you pass the night. So Paiyuki, would you roll 2d6 plus three because you're still in a safe area? Just the side 11. of the boundary stone. I got an 11 plus 3. You got an 11 plus 3, all right. Everyone gets restful sleep. Um, and is anybody down any hit points or ability points? Mm -mm. Everybody's at top form. Good luck. So I've rewritten this move to um, be um, a little different and one of the options is you awaken refreshed take plus one forward to your first roll of the day so if you make whatever your first roll is on this next leg of the journey you get a you get plus one to it because you had a good restful sleep and you ate well okay okay, okay. um jaspinder and upajai uh bid you a fond farewell um uh, they make some joke about having a, a goat race in the future with uh, Taimi, with all three of you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
uh, and um, they head off um, back east. I make the special call to the goat just when they're heading off, just to see if I can get a rise out of the goat. Do you want to roll for that and take plus one? Because because <laughs> you're feeling good this morning. Uh, uh, sure. You think I now before you used intelligence, right? Or are you using charisma this time, or is it still? Uh... Oh, uh, no, intelligence is good. I rolled an eleven plus one. Okay. Um, what was the? What, what were you trying to get the goat to actually do? Oh, you know, I was just trying to get the goat to um, to. to uh, to to um i guess make the 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 call that i was remembering was um uh, to make the goat turn and um come back towards me oh okay is that all right yes yeah 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 so um they like make a joke about riding goats with you in the future and then they both turn it right off and you call out um a command in venati or whatever cluck cluck sound you make, and uh, the goat like catches up and turns, and Jasper almost falls off of it. <laughs> and then Jasper, Jasper and Upajai both look down at the goat and look at you, and then look at each other. There's a moment where they're both just like stone faced, like, "What just happened to my goat?" <laughs> um, and then they both uh, crack up. Um, yeah. With laughter. I wave them off. I think. I think for that move, you get a bond with each of them. Whoa. All right. Or I should say they have a bond with you. So you don't write that. Or I guess you can you make a note of that. They have a bond with you. OK. OK. All right. So that was, let me see here. If I can draw our little. All right, so that was to the Boundary Stone. Next morning, um, this stretch, um, you're going to have to cross two rivers, and you're basically going to get up to, so it's going to be slow going. So um, you're not going to be on the road and you're the path anymore, you're not going to be on the track anymore. Um, so uh, it's, you know, given your, actually Timey was up here just recently, Timey and Anika were both up here recently. So they, by Timey's estimation, if you make decent time, you should be able to get to this juncture today, um, at that juncture of the river there. Um, so you're going to be rolling for this stretch. Is that where Timey got to? Yeah, Timey went up that far. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably have to like leave. Yeah, we'll have to leave the cart and then like go on foot. Um, for, for you mean to uh, investigate the yeah the, the big boy kings? yeah the big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, so let's have um, this is Tiny's role for this leg. Is this unsafe or dangerous? Ooh, now we're in, we've crossed the boundary stone. This is actually dangerous territory. Okay. So. It went straight from safe to dangerous. So that's a plus one. Yeah. All right, I got an eight. Ooh. There is an incident at some point along the way. Oh, am I looking at an old version of the rules? Probably, yeah. Okay. I've been kind of updating them as we've been um, as we've been going. Okay. Yeah, it's not the it's not now it's not um, it's not the specific thing for each every little item there. In fact, I can um, pull it up so you can see what we're looking at here. So, what's the plan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you go ahead. Yeah, chat about the plan. What's going to happen? Well, we gonna, yeah. Based, based on what um, Anika and I saw, 
the beast leaves in the morning and goes up the river looking looking for something we couldn't figure out what but it must be something that he's looking in the river for it he's digging around in the river those creatures follow him and so we would want to approach his lair when he is out not only to avoid him but to avoid those reptilian creatures that surround him um I, th I think that we should basically just like in the middle of the night kind of get as close to the cave as possible and basically once it leaves and is out of sight, we go in there and see what we can get. Um, you mean once, once the River King has left? Yeah, once he's left for whatever he's searching for during the day. Um, that's uh, I tried to figure out what he was looking for so that we could potentially use it as a diversion or as a way to de-incentivize him from eating us but I, but I couldn't it could be looking there might be some sort of creature in the river that it eats um, it could be looking for treasure I, I, I couldn't figure it out Yeah, he's looking under rocks, right? Yeah. Just big crawdads. So um, uh, this is what set out looks like now. Is that up on your screen, the rules? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it just changed it. So on a 7 and 9, there's an incident at some point along the way. And then there's a little um, table that you roll on here, depending on whether you're on wilderness road or settlement. Um, and you're in the wilderness. So you're going to roll a d12. Uh, one. Okay. So I have a little uh, encounter table here that I've created specifically for this region. Um, you're gonna roll a d10. Seven. Okay. All right. So <laughs> switching back. So you, um, are you guys seeing the map now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so you make it across um, this first stretch. So the, wood, the woods off to your um, left are kind of the classic dark foreboding woods. Like these are not, this is not the mother wood, which, you know, is like old growth and very ancient and scary in its own way. Um, but there's Taimi in particular has this whole time down from north to south and now heading back and on the scouting expedition just had a has a bad feeling about the woods off to the um, to the west there. Okay, there's mm -hmm. just it, there are different kind of trees than you're used to and it just has like a um, it almost it seems to have this it emanates a kind of um, uh, creepy kind of energy. Um, so you don't worry, like, Tammy is a particular, just doesn't want to get close to those. And Annika is down with that, and Annika feels it too, and is not, would also like to keep her distance. Um, so you get the wagon this far, um, you manage to, um, with some work, you get it across, you find a part of this um, tributary here where the, um, the, the slopes on either side actually come down to the water and you're able to we'll get the wagon down there and with, this is where you're super impressed by the, um, the pulling strength of Itzy, the the beast um, um, coming up the other slope. This animal just like hauls this totally laden cart up the far side. Um, and then you find yourselves back at that ruined um, hut that you encountered the first time. Uh, so that's around um, sort of midday you guys break there for, you know, your kind of meal, your midday meal. Um, and then you push on and you start to um, cross um, this landscape. Who is like walking point? Who is your scout? Uh, I probably would be because I was just here. That makes sense. Okay, 
So Taimi um, and maybe Annika is with you too, or do you do you, do you scout solo when you're on point? Uh, no, I mean she would probably put up resistance if I tried to let, leave her out of it. So <laughs> she's yeah, she's probably with me. Okay, and would you roll one d six, please, for me? Six. Okay. So um, it's rolling grassland. It is just past midday, it's bright and sunny. And um, you remember crossing, you remember crossing this land just a few days ago, right? Or maybe this was a week ago because you had another week of downtime. But anyway, relatively recently you crossed this landscape. You top a rise and you're looking out over a, a wide expanse of this grassland with the River Kings River called the Kings Walk off here, off to the east there. And probably about half a mile away from this rise that you're on, you see something that was not there before. It is a, looks like a, a circle of trees. And they're, um, they're white. So there's, they, they stand up very starkly against this kind of verdant green grassland, right? Um, so they're still long distance away. They're big enough for you to see. You know, you're gonna you're gonna guess that at this distance, maybe they're 20 feet tall. Mm. Um, they don't appear to have leaves on them, um, whereas everything else, all the other deciduous stuff in the area, you know, the leaves are out. These appear to be leafless white trees that are in standing in a um, a circle. Um. Okay. I tell uh, Anika to stay here and keep an eye on that. It looks unnatural, and I, I'm I'm weary of I'm weary of unnatural things, um, or so you know things that were different from last time. And I'm going to run back to the uh, to the group and uh, and let them know. Uh, just beyond that rise, there's a circle of trees that bear no leaves and are as white as the snow. Uh, they were not here when Anika and I, and I traversed these lands a couple of weeks ago. I don't know whether it's the work of some creature or some uh, unnatural power. But I was hoping that you guys uh, would come back with me and take a look at it to see whether we need to, take, to give this a wide berth or not. Yeah. Yeah, so um, everybody kind of re... Um, regroups at that um, overlook. And um, uh, yeah, so you see what I just described. Uh, if you wanna, you know, so you could, you could get closer to investigate if you chose to do so, or, you know, steer wide around it. Um, what do you, what do you, um, what do you, what do you do? Are they kind of in our pathway? They're pretty much right, yep. You could, you could go, if you went around them to the left, you'd be going closer to the dark woods. If you went around to the right, you'd be closer to the river. I would rather not deter our, our, our trail. Uh, I, I feel a great ominous, uh, uh, fee I, I get a great ominous feeling from that, from the woods. Um, and I don't want to get close to the River King's river in case him or his reptilian cohorts are about. Do you know that these trees were not here before, Taimi? I'm certain of it. I would have I would have noticed something. Um, all the other trees are are marked by the, the fresh green of spring. Uh, I would have noted trees that were as white as bone. Yeah, we're sure Paiviki. We were both here. We don't remember them. So they are spirits from the woods that have come down to the river. Perhaps it is a good omen. Do the trees look like the trees in the area, but bare and white? Or do they look like a different type of tree? It looks like a different type of tree. Mm, mm. You, I mean, you know trees. You don't know these yeah. kinds in the dark wood, but just by looking at those and looking at these, you can see that the, the white trees um, are more uh, straight up and down, whereas the trees over in the woods, you know, they branch more and they're kind of, you know, they bend this way and that. These, the central trunk on these trees is quite 
straight up and down and then the branches come out at um they're very angular mm -hmm. um you know and it looks like each one of them looks like a full tree like say an oak um but, but just leafless so it's like these um with yeah. all the limbs pointing out in different directions um Moiran, have you ever seen a tree like this in your travels? Um, could, is it possible? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you can totally try to establish. I mean, I I know the qualities of these trees, but you could easily you could choose to establish that you have encountered them before, and then you might know something about them. Mm. So um, to establish, I would like say. You would just say like, yes, I've seen I them have. before. And you could say where you saw them, but you wouldn't be able to say anything about what they do or what they're like, because I already have that information. And then I still am rolling to establish. So I might not know. It. So what exactly what you'd be establishing is your own personal history um, in terms of like having encountered these particular kinds of things before. So I think I, re I recall something. Um, and on a six or less, if you establish, I would get to make a move. So just so you just, you know, just so you're aware of that. <laughs> That's risky. Well, do I remember? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Learn something or we could have something <laughs> bad happen. Well, it seems like we're afraid of them, so. So if if my recollection is super hazy, um, when what do I what would I really be saying about it if I was establishing it? So what you'd be saying is that you had seen them before. So, so right now, you know, you can actually say no, I've never seen them before, and then we move on. But if you want Weirin to have seen had seen them before and had know something about them, then you would roll to see if that's true. And then if you do know something about them, I would tell you what you know. Does that make sense? Yes. You're establishing whether you've encountered these trees before, but um, since I've already worked out the details, you wouldn't really be able to invent any details about them. I think it might be worth trying. I don't know. Do you want to be? Right. I mean, I, it does seem like something that, um, well, it might be possible that, um, when we were in the Arlen Dweer area, um, I heard someone talking about like a tree that can spring up at a certain area here. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll totally buy that if, if, it's, if it ends up being true. That sounds like a good um, explanation. Either way, it's a good test for your intelligence. <laughs> yeah, or how much I can pick up from like a side conversation. So, oh, I have to roll intelligence. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So that's a zero. Uh, I rolled an eight. Oh, but I get a plus one, right? Because of, I guess that doesn't really matter. But no, no, no. You do because of you, because you had a nice evening. Yeah. Because you slept well and you ate well. So yeah. <laughs> so you got a nine, and you know you could spend luck to make it a ten. I don't. Well, you know, wait. What about by cunning? Could I spend my cunning? What is the time? wording? What is the wording in your playbook about how you can spend cunning? Okay, let me get there. Um, <sighs> how clever and prepared you are at any given moment. Um, no, not really. When I make a move that falls within my area of expertise, so that would be a poison expertise. So yeah. I don't really have um, grounds unless this happens to be a poison thing. Nope. Yeah. So you can totally. So on a seven and nine, um, you were right, but there's a caveat or complication of my choosing. So you can totally just stick with that. And in this case, the um, is your I would, I, I'm okay to spend the luck. Actually, okay. <laughs> it'll be fine. So I guess I'll you are going to get to be level four pretty soon, so you'll get some luck. Yeah, so I'll just be unlucky for a while. Okay. 
yeah, so those, um, the elves in the, um, uh, in Arland Weir um, did mention um, these trees. I guess maybe you guys were talking about local uh, flora. Um, and they call them in the elven tongue, they're called Kran Trathnona, um, which means twilight tree. And they described them as, um, for this part of the, so these elves, as you know, um, uh, Kalen, their leader, brought them down and, and um, settled in this area, but elves did not usually traditionally live in this area. So the twilight trees were a new thing for them. They had not seen them elsewhere. So that's maybe one of the reasons they talked about them to you. Um, and they said that these trees appear around um, uh, something, an animal will die or be killed and its corpse will be, its carcass will be lying somewhere. And these twilight trees will just appear um, in the morning at dawn. They'll kind of, um, none of these elves actually have ever, uh, well, from what you heard, um, no elf had actually seen them at the moment of appearance, but um, there are, would be reports of them having just kind of showed up and then um, at dusk they would be gone again. And whenever they were present, they were um, um, gathered around um, something that was dead. And, um, they would, um, when you get close enough to them, the story you heard tells of how they have these um, surface roots that are like very web-like surface roots that would, um, whenever they were seen, the dead, the carcass of the animal was kind of covered by these, these roots that had reached out from the trees gathered around. Um, And sometimes, um, so at, by, the, by, by the time dusk fell on a, um, a day where these, where these trees had been sighted, um, the trees kind of glowed brightly um, in the fading light. And then as the light faded from the sky, the trees would fade away as well, leaving behind um, the, a completely desiccated um, carcass. In fact, leaving behind just bones, even if it had just been a fresh, um, a fresh, a freshly killed animal. So that sounds natural, <laughs> or not so, not so like um, other dimensional. I guess we don't know what, why they live in this area, right? They just this is unique to this area. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see what a creature they're gathered around if they are truly here because a creature has fallen. And then if we wanted to leave a corpse out, we could test to see if um, <laughs> they would eat the, eat like a rabbit or something. But did the, um, did the elves say that these trees were dangerous? Mm. Um, let me see what you know here. They have not, they, their knowledge is limited, but they had not, um, that's all they ever witnessed was the trees gathered around a dead thing um, in the way that they described. So they never had seen or heard of uh, these trees being um, sort of, uh, you know, active or dangerous in their own right. They, they seem to appear around dead things. We could um, study, if it doesn't seem dangerous, we could study some of the like sticks or something and see if you could plant them or turn them into a, a poison. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if this tree has some sort of property that like decays, it's almost like right. it has like, a Venus flytrap property. Yeah. Well, right. but if if it appears and then just disappears again, that makes it sound like it's um, magical or um, otherworldly, perhaps. Well, no way to know but to try. <laughs> it seems well, like these things don't, you know, only 
are attracted to and, and decompose things that are already dead, we should, we should be fine. Well, does, um, to us is the, is the river king considered otherworldly or is that, um, something that's natural? Um, giants are not, so you live in a world where obviously magic is very present and also the idea of other worlds is, even though in Rayuna you guys were a backwater that was sheltered, there were stories of magic and, you know, there are strange things in the motherwood for sure. Um, straight up magic was not something you had really encountered much of until you faced this sorcerer. Um, but the idea of other worlds, those, that, those figure into the stories of all the cultures that you that you know, right? Like um, the, the Metza have stories, the Korkin have stories. There's certainly the world of the gods, but then there's um, whatever place the demons come from. And among the elves, especially the idea of the, um, the twilight realm is very um, mm. Mm. present in their culture. And um, the elves that you spoke to in Arland Weir, like that was they assume that it has some association with the Twilight Realm. Whereas mm -hmm. the River King, as far as you know, as far as you can tell, is very, uh, you know, the line between natural and unnatural, who knows when magic is part of the ecosystem, but um, it's not, you know, seeing a creature so large with like all those eyes and stuff is um, certainly unusual. Mm -hmm. But it, it didn't do anything that um, marked it as m magical per se. Right. So maybe um, the concern from Warren's part is just messing or being disrespectful of um, like just the process of nature if if it's like if it is like a twilight uh, if it is like going back and forth or something in other worlds. Um, I, maybe messing up their natural cycle is a concern. Like Mirren feels maybe like the Twilight Realm is a little sacrosanct or something not to be messed with. Is that right? Okay, got it. Maybe. We have a tradition in Rayuna that when somebody dies, we carry them to the woods and leave them by mm. a tree. And mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that, um, anyone knows how the people who die return to the mother would, but we know that they do. Um, I wonder if the, but we've, no one's ever told stories of the twilight trees in Rayuna. Right, but yeah, that's right. Um, who knows where those stories began, right? The tradition of burying folks in the woods. But yeah, there's no stories in, in Rayuna about these trees. Do you remember uh, I, uh, I took the, I'm trying to remember what it was, the skull or something of the, the, the body that we found in the, the ruined hut and I laid it out in the woods. Yeah. But that's not here. <laughs> no, no, no. And if you wanted to have checked that when you passed the hut, you could have. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not here. This was, that was a different, different place. Okay. So I guess the question is, investigate closer or give a wide berth? Um, I'd be curious to see it up close. You know, I, I, I don't necessarily, I respect the correlation between this and some of our, our practices with the, um, the bringing people to the woods. Uh, but also it's from your description, it sounds like it's no harm to us. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I'm fine going close to it. Okay. And so uh, does anybody else want to get up close or would, is Taimi going to be a kind of investigative scout? And do you mean, do you mean like checking it out to like get more details or do you mean like just passing close by with the wagon? Yeah, just passing close by. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I think that once Muirin said these things like just appear and decompose dead things and then disappear, Timey was just like, didn't just didn't even track the rest. Just like, okay, well, they're not going to attack us. So like, there's no harm. We're not dead. So we can go near it. <laughs> it would be interesting to see how big the how big the corpse is or how much it can do in one day too. Sure. What, what I mean, time that, that, that's very it? that's very interesting to like John Chitterjan. Uh I just don't think that <laughs> Taimi has like a grasp of sure. So if you just pass close by with the wagon you can look and see as you go by. Um Jan, were you gonna say something? Oh what time of day is it? Uh, it's like probably, it's, it's like mid-afternoon. Oh, okay. Because we could also wait until night and then see what they were eating if we wanted to, but then we would lose a little bit of time. Right. Do, do the roots cover what they're trying to eat? According to the stories of the elves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, let's get, let's, let's get close and just see. Oh, I'm... So Taimi's voting for um, continuing on the way, but passing close enough to get a good look. Yes. Is everybody cool with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Tapias is a little anxious, but not overly so. Anika's totally down. Um, so Tapias just kind of like, um, gulp, you know? Okay, this is really strange, but um, I trust you guys. Um, and, um, Oh yeah, and Itzy, the um, the wagon hauler, um, is a little hesitant, but actually um, with a little prodding, um, continues on their way. And you pass within, you know, 40 feet of this strange um, circle of seven of these trees. Yeah, and each one towers about 20 feet high. It's got these weird angular, they got these weird angular branches that, um, the bigger branches on them have these, um, the one thing that strikes you as potentially dangerous is that they have these, the ends of the bigger branches have these kind of scythe-like edges to them. Like the branches taper and tighten into almost like slightly curved sides that point downward. The trees don't move as you approach, they're just stock still, but as you get closer, you have this sense of, um, well, there's no animal sounds around, and it's like your uh, your hearing gets a little kind of muffled. Like the nat the sounds of the natural world kind of like drop out a little bit, and it seems like they're a little bit of distance. Even like the creaking of the wagon wheels just starts to seem a little far away, and it's a little bit like there's a slight moment where you think you might be dreaming, right? It has that kind of vibe to it. It's a little strange. You get close enough to see that in the middle of this circle of trees, the, the circle itself is probably um, 15 or 20 feet, no, 30, about 30 feet in diameter. So that's how far, how wide the circle is. And in the middle of it is a, the, the roots have all covered, total, almost totally covered that circle, that interior circle, and then um, grown up over a shape that is roughly, um, it's like almost like a heap that would be, um, say, the size of, if you took like three dead cattle and piled them on top of each other. Wow. So it's a pretty good sized pile. Um, now I'm not, so the shape of it doesn't imply that there's actually a pile, but that's, I'm just, that's the size I'm trying to communicate. That. Yeah, yeah, that's really big. Um, yeah, and then, um, so it's all sort of strangely mesmerizing, like you're a little bit of like a slight, disorientation um, passing by and then when you get um, further away from them on the far side um, your senses kind of return to you and um, you hear the you know there's like almost like a little um, what kind of sensory shock as like um, you're back in the um, the real world as it were uh, and you continue on your way, unless there was something else you wanted to do there. Anything else you were curious about? All right. These trees, uh, 
they have a sinister air to them. I think that it is good that we did not get any closer. Um, okay. uh, and then you, by evening, you're at the expected spot because you didn't lose any time. And would you guys, would your goal to be to camp on this, the near side of this tributary river or the far side? Um, you know, I guess the, strategically or whatever, like, um, if you're on the far side, I guess your campsite would, you wouldn't have to cross water to get to your campsite um, when you need to go back to it. Yeah, that, that, that would be my vote. Yeah. To, to be on the other side. Okay. Yep. So camping here. Um, yeah, so crossing this river, um, no, no problem. You managed to get the wagon across with some effort. Um, it is pretty much dark by the time you were ready to um, set up camp. So everybody marks a ration. Okay. Ration, ration. Anika passes around a, a skin full of honey mead. Um, now the question is, um, so here you are in the realm of the River King. You're not too far from the spot where you know he has walked. It is nighttime. And as far as Taimi knows, um, the River King is not out at night. Um, you do hear all the sort of usual sounds of the wild at night, especially as you settle in. Um, uh, but you're not, so I guess my question is how far away from the banks of the river are, is your camp? How far inland are you setting up? Um, I would I would say a fair distance. I would say like fifty yards. I would go a little farther than that, probably, because that guy is already he's like <laughs> he's like twenty yards tall or something. So, um, with those tentacles. That's too close for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair, fair. I would go where we could get some good cover and hide and and also just be able to, if he was coming out of the river, that we could see him coming up or some other creature. So ideally, ha land that was a little bit high and well um, protected by um, by foliage. Yeah, so we can see, we could also see the river so that if anything was coming out of the river, we could see it coming. Okay, okay. So you find a, um, well, actually, I think you're going to need to, you can either find answers or get lucky to, to find that, a site that has all of those features about it. So would, if we got lucky, would it be our luckiest person rolling or our unluckiest person? <laughs> it would be person? your unluckiest person rolling. Okay. <laughs> um. I was just curious because I'm getting ready to run a game tomorrow. So I was like, how does that work? <laughs> well, yeah, mine is minus one. So you probably don't want to get, or like, or I don't know. But you're finding answers is um, you would use the luckiest person, right? No, finding answers you would use, um, in this case, it would be either wisdom or intelligence of, yeah. one, of one person. Right. Everybody else is helping. Yeah, so that's a much do more doable prospect. Yeah, and Moirin is um, particularly good at finding answers. <laughs> uh, through wisdom. Yeah. Which you have what a plus plus two with, and then with people helping, that's another plus two. It maxes out at plus four, so you'd be one with plus four. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. Okay, so I'll look for this area to camp. Yeah, you're looking for the ideal campsite that has all these features that have been listed. Uh, 13. Yeah. <laughs> Great, yep, you got it, you set up. Um, uh, fire or no fire? You know, I vote no fire. Yeah. It's dark as okay. So it's a cold, cold dinner. Um, nobody complains about it. 
everybody's well aware, like uh, Tapia and Anika are well aware of where they are and what the risks are. So nobody's complaining. Um, past the night and uh, whose turn? I think that makes it uh, Mirren's turn to roll again. So now you are in the River King's realm, which is, um, Perilous? Well, it's perilous, yeah. And how far is it to the falls? Is that another half a day? Yep. Uh, with the wagon. On foot, um, you could get there in just a couple hours. Because I wonder now, if he leaves during the day, do we want to go at nighttime in the early morning? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, that we leave at like 3, 4 in the morning. So that this, you know, right when he gets out, we can watch him. And once he starts going down the river looking for whatever crawdads or whatever, we can get in there to have maximum exploring time. That's what I was wondering. Um, I think it, previously I would have suggested, oh, you know what, we'll get to the next morning. And we'll, we'll talk about it then. Okay. But, but, but the idea would be that. to wake up really early. That that, 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 yeah, that's, I think that's the idea. Sorry, Jan, what were you trying to say? Yeah. Yeah, just to, does that seem like a good plan? Or, I mean, I remember we, we also left a, a marker, like a stack of stones or something to mark the direction of what we thought he was coming from. Yeah. So oh, if we, wow. yeah, we'd have to find that. that spot if we wanted to get our bearings as to where we think he might be going into right because the the wall of waterfall is quite wide right like there's it's like a huge long cliff and that those cascades are coming down all along it and you had tried to figure out basically it was very misty so it was hard to tell specifically where he went but you you did set up that kind of that, that, those rocks that pointed in that direction so the, your first thing would be to locate those rocks yeah um, great, so early rise, three o'clock in the morning, and then set out on foot and get there by dawn, basically. Yeah. Um, normally, I would suggest that somebody stays with the wagon, but I think actually all hands on deck is going to be better. I think we should just like tie Itzy up. I'm not too concerned about like there being a rogue, you know, Venati brigand out here. And um, bring in the food with you then? Because food will definitely go missing just because of general wildlife. Uh, yeah, we're already carrying our food. Okay. I'm fine with that. So toting all the food. And you're bringing Topias and Anika. That's what you're saying. All hands on deck. <laughs> well, I don't think that Anika, would, I think I would have to fight her to stay back. And there's no way that Topias is going to stay back by himself. Maybe if what? Sweet Durbin was still with us. You've already figured out all the uh, interpersonal yeah. dynamics. <laughs> Everybody's coming along. Okay. This whole right. prospect makes me nervous. <laughs> taking teens, taking teens into the dungeon again. <laughs> all right. This would be Tapia's second, second dungeon adventure. He's gonna Everybody's level up, man. I just know it. Just if if he sneezes again or whatever he did that like Yarko tried to save him from, like. Just let him do it. Just let him sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot that he's the one that caused that to happen. Yeah, don't chop him in the neck. <laughs> All right. No. So we're in. We're in. Sorry. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Um, I'm just thinking about Topias again. We we have four or three pairs of chain mail. Three pairs of chain mail. Yes, correct. And I'm going to wear one. I believe yeah. Tiny's wearing one. Yeah, I'm wearing one. And is is the third one, is that gonna go on? Is Anika gonna wear it? Last time she fought, but Yeah, I had it on Anika. Okay. Because I felt like it would be more useful on her. I, I definitely think that's what piece is gonna be there, but I can't imagine he's gonna be out in front. Well, I kinda wanna give Topias some armor. I I maybe uh I could give him my shield. Okay. Gary. Yeah. So that he has some sort of protection. And then I'll have more hands for grabbing stuff. And should, so 
should Tapias or Anika bring some adventuring gear too? Yeah, oh, that's, that's that's really smart. Yeah, definitely. So John, you got you're tracking that. Mm -hmm. And Tapias has what a spear? No, he has a hatchet. Okay, so and Anika has a short bow, or sorry, a crossbow and short sword. Yeah. He's got a hatchet and a and a shield. Okay, man. Got your little dungeon crew here. I'm gonna give them both adventuring gear. I think why not? I think I'm gonna take some adventuring gear. All right, three uses of adventuring gear are checked out. <laughs> of the library. Yeah. Remember to check them back in. <laughs> Look at all this space we have in the cart now. <laughs> you gotta fill it up with treasure. Oh, it's just gonna be so much treasure. <laughs> Was that stone that was held up by Mukata, the Mukata statue, was yeah. that the stone that Vashnish brought back? Yes. Okay, good. That is the <laughs> only I mean, I don't know, he could have gotten it somewhere else and we could just <laughs> find like, little crawdads, you know. I think he's like triple checking with the Venati, so that's the stone. <laughs> yeah, oh, she definitely, she definitely was doing that. Well, I mean, Vashnish said that's where he got it. <laughs> I mean, the stories all came from Bajnik, so who knows how much of it was true. Yeah. Um, okay, great. So, Mwirin, would you roll to pass the night? Um, you're in perilous territory, so that's 2d6 with no modifier. Oh, 12. Oh. Everyone gets sleep. Everyone takes plus one forward as you wake up at 3 in the morning. I don't know if we should get plus one forward to the sake of the three in the morning. <laughs> well, I mean, you I probably went to bed at like, you probably went to bed at like eight. That's true. Just okay. super refreshed. I'll take it. I, I'd say I'd say take what you can get, given that you only have nine hit points. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Is it because you know Pyviki doesn't doesn't uh, sleep through the night? She just stays up in excitement. That's right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. So you set out. It's dark. How are you going to find your way through the woods in the dark? You're going to have a uh, light a torch. Oof. Well, I mean, I guess we shouldn't be worried because the idea is that he's not out now. A torch might attract other stuff, but presumably he won't be out to be attracted by it. I mean, I, I would wonder if our night vision, especially Murin's, would be good enough. Hmm. Um, Murin the, the, could totally... Um, Murin needs, like, starlight or moonlight, and there's definitely... An, enough from Weirin to see by, and then you guys would have to like hold hands or have like a rope connecting you. How would you handle that? I mean, I have an easier time walking through the woods at night than I, you know, without a flashlight or, or a, 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 you know, in my uh, experience, but. Um, right, great, on a night when there's not a new moon, right? Or is it just by starlight? Yeah. Yeah. On a night when there's not a new moon. When I walk when there's a new moon, it's very hard to go fast. You have to go slow. You have to go slow. You can feel it with your feet. But um, I, think if, I, I think if we just followed really closely behind Moirin and just kind of, you know, she's like, root. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Great. Excellent. I love it. That's perfect. That's, that's it. And um, now this little leg here is going to require another set out roll because it's a good several hours of walking through the underbrush following Mirren's lead in the dark of the pre-dawn. Uh, and this is a roll for Paiviki to make. 2D6, okay. 2D6, no modifier. No modifier for Perilous? Modifier, yeah, Perilous is zero and then you get everything above Perilous, you get, you get Got it. For. Ooh. I rolled a three. Oh, let's go. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> we will uh, D10, please. Five. Okay. Huh. Uh, Mirren, make a saving throw with wisdom. Whoa. Okay. So we are getting plus one to this because of our... This is it for you, yep. This is oh, it. Oh, yeah. This is nice. It. Good night's sleep. It's super hard to remember those plus ones forward, so good job. Seven. You got a seven. See, paying off. What's the um, uh, marching order? We're in front. Who's next? Oh, it's sorry. I didn't add my modifier. It's just nine, but uh, that doesn't matter. Because you can't. You're not getting up to ten. Yeah. Um, so it goes Mirin. Who's next in line? Um, I'll go behind. Okay, let's just set up the default. Where do you want to be, Jaime? Uh, I mean, I'm most dangerous when I have a clear shot. So wherever is best. I, would, I think I would either be most useful closer to the front or further to the back. Like, do you want to bring up the rear? Since, uh, I, yeah, I could, bring, I could bring up the rear. Okay. I'll have a clear shot, whatever's coming behind us. So Mirin, Paviki, Anika, Topias? Yeah. Okay. And then that'll be the default exploration order unless you guys want to switch it up. But we'll just sort of assume that's the order. Because Mirren's the best scout you got, right? No offense, Hunter. Um, <laughs> so, um, Mirren, you step over um, your like, log and you step over um, a rotting log. And then you hesitate, and um, there's something. You step over a running log, and um, you put your um, your foot on the ground on the far side, and your foot immediately sinks up to um, the top of your thigh. So basically, you fall. Oh wait, let's have a feather light step. <laughs> That's not what happens. <laughs> you step over the log just fine. Something and else. You're walking happens. along and you're like, wait a second, you pause and you realize there's something strange about the ground. But at that point, Paiviki has stepped over the same log. Oh. And Paiviki's leg goes into the ground up to the thigh. And when that happens, Mirin, you feel the ground um, starting to slip away, starting to sink as if, as if you're right on top of a, a sinkhole. Um, it just suddenly shifts and um, things start to um, uh, sort of drain. So Paiviki, uh, you're, you're still on your feet. Uh, Marin's still on their feet and um, sort of sinking and Paiviki has sunk all the way up to her thigh and is um, starting to uh, sink down as well. Uh, nobody else has crossed the log yet. Uh, what do you do? I guess I'm asking, I'm asking Weirin because Weirin is in front. Yeah. Um, can I, am I, can I grab, um, grab something like a branch near me and then try to grab Paiviki and then La, uh, forcefully but quietly um, tell everyone to stop um, <laughs> so that they don't also fall past that log. Okay, okay, great. So you shout out the order, you um, grab a branch, you grab Paiviki uh, to, to, and you're, now you're trying to use the branch, the strength of the branch to hold your weight and to keep Paiviki from sinking, is that right? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Okay. No problem to grab a hold of Paiviki. No problem to find a branch. You just have to get lucky to see if the branch is strong enough. No! <laughs> you can do it. 
Well, at least we have a bond. Can that yeah. help us? Uh, totally. If it's luck. It, uh, uh, when you mark and see, it says, when you make any roll to assist, defend, or avenge a person with whom you have a bond, you may mark bonds with that person. Um, you're assisting this person. So yeah, you can totally mark a bond with that. Okay. So this would be a plus zero now. Okay. Okay. Ten. Ten. Okay. So you shout out the order, grab the branch, grab Paiviki. Um, you feel like the weight of Paiviki um, pulling you down, and then the, the tree's kind of pulling against that. Um, and then uh, Paiviki's leg gets yanked out of the ground. And um, you both are aware of the ground in probably a, it's about a 15 foot diameter is just sliding down into like a, you know, like a funnel, basically. <sighs> like that. Um, and Paiviki's feet are still kind of trailing as the, as the ground is being kind of drawn out. It's so hard because it's a mirror image. <laughs> so the ground is uh, slipping out and Paiviki's feet are, are still sort of on it, kind of kicking against it and looking for something to grab onto. Because you can't, you can tell that the branch might actually give if you manage to like um, really pull Paiviki's full weight. So you're basically like managing to keep Paiviki from slipping um, further into the hole. Um, everybody else is at the wall as this going on. As, as this is going on, is the tree trunk that we stepped over going into the hole? Uh, that appears to be that. That looks like it's right at the edge of the funnel. So it's not going in. Um. Can I, I don't have the same level of dark vision as Muirin, but can I kind of tell what's going on based on what she said and what I am observing? Uh, yeah, and you know, um, I think at this point there's a, some faint light in the sky. Uh -huh. So you're able to actually, yeah, from what you can hear it too, you can hear this, the sound of it. So you can basically tell what's going on. Yeah. Um, the, the train of logic that Taimi has is that like, she's, been through this land before she's fairly familiar with like the type of terrain we're in this is not a phenomenon that feels natural it feels too i don't know she's gonna shoot it <laughs> <laughs> i like taini is not convinced that this is something natural happening it seems too perfect it's it doesn't seem right to have like a sandy, creepy sinkhole. So how is she gonna? Uh, yeah, let's let's hear how this happens. Um. Uh, 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 I don't. I don't think she's gonna say anything. I think she's just gonna draw her crossbow and just shoot it into the center. She's gonna shoot down into the pit. Just to shoot into the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll. I'll. I'll uh, yeah. I'll say don't. Don't move. Don't move. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, let me think. I, you don't have to roll the hit. You've got an 18 dexterity. You're a hunter, and this is a stationary target, right? You're not like it's not yeah. like um, you're just shooting. You're basically shooting at the the point where the funnel comes to the mouth of the funnel, right? The, the, yeah. 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 So you're just like, and you're it's a crossbow. You're just like point. It's like point and shoot, and you know it's only like a. 15 foot distance, so you don't have to roll the hit, but you can roll damage. <laughs> I will roll damage. Um, I rolled five damage. Wow, interesting. With two piercing. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's a you hear a thunk, and then um, you hear a oh man. And when Mirin looks down, so everybody's now looking down and the, um, emerging from the sort of sandy dirt that is all trickling into some uh, cavity. <laughs> there are uh, uh, two giant kind of pinchers um, kind of like uh, grasping at the air. The sand is kind of falling into, well, let's call it its mouth and around and past it. And you shot basically right into that. And it's going... <laughs> Um, oh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it takes a while to reload a crossbow. <laughs> yeah. 
um i watched a video the other day actually of two guys doing it two guys who were trained with those weapons and the one guy with the regular bow got off five shots before the guy with the crossbow could reload yeah. wow um, uh so you're doing that kind of kind of kind of and um which by the way you just stick your foot in the stirrup and then it has like a loop in the front right yeah exactly in this one yeah um and so in the meantime let's see Moiran's got the branch, Paiviki is dangling. So the branch is actually starting to give. You've managed to totally keep Paiviki from getting sucked in there, but that branch is not gonna hold the weight of both of you. So Paiviki and Moiran, what's your move? Um, I, I, I just, I'm not able to cast any spells at this point, uh, am I? I'm, that's correct, that's right. That's you correct. Because I thought of one thing I could do if I could, but I can't. You know, I, this is like, you're not a full-fledged magic user, but I'm given your studies, I'm not going to preclude the idea that um, you could maybe pull something out of your hat, so to speak. Um, yeah, I don't think we have to technically wait for you to hit level four to really suddenly be able to do that stuff. We can totally um, make that line fuzzy. Yeah. Because um, in the fiction, we've established that, like, you've started to learn that stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be swallowed by a giant ant uh, lion. So um, I'm, I'm running out of other ideas as to what I could do to... Uh, Well, she's got a spear in one hand, so I don't know if she could even cast a spell um, while holding one hand and holding a spear in the other spell hand. Did, did, um, you, uh, did you take leader? I did take leader. Good point. Yeah. I am a leader. I've just never used it. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. And the text uh, of leader is when you bark commands in the heat of battle, I think this counts. You roll yeah. charisma. Oh yeah. And you um, to grant people um, bonuses to do stuff. But what would your orders be in this? <laughs> <laughs> right, what would my orders be? Um, save yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> right, save yourselves, run away. <laughs> um, interesting. Is she a fighter or is she a... Um, a magic user, somewhere halfway in between. Yeah. Um, um, how big is this thing? Uh, <clears throat> Probably pretty big. The, the pinchers that you see? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, like, they're as big as my, you know, from elbow to, like, my forearms are as big as the pinchers. But you can't see anything else other than that sticking up out of the bottom. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, and just trying to think of, I have a crossbow slung over my shoulder, but... We didn't say that the other guys were carrying crossbows, were we? Uh, yeah, we. Yeah, we have. Uh, they have crossbows. Both of them have crossbows, actually. Oh. You, me, and then Annika and Topias all have crossbows. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you want to shout orders at them? <laughs> <laughs> or just or 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 uh, Timey could just encourage them to shoot because they both they're both a little like, wait, what's going on? It's yeah, all happening so quickly. Yeah, I think that was good what Taimi did. So, um, yeah, uh, I will shout orders. I like that idea. Um, so, Paiviki's going to shout, shoot, shoot into the pit. I'm going to shout an order. <laughs> Excellent. Roll charisma to see how well these guys respond to your orders. Um, I rolled a four. <laughs> plus two, oh. so that's a six. <laughs> plus one um, forward, right? For the for the next <gasps> leap. Well, no, a six would be mark charisma. 
Oh, which is what you want to do? No, no, no. I'm just saying a six would be a failure. Right, but did you get? Did you take the plus one for the good night's sleep? Oh yeah, good night's sleep. <laughs> you didn't want to take it, and here we are. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> take plus um, one forwards. That takes you up to seven to nine. All allies who obey take plus one forward to their role. So yeah. um, Anika and Tobias both. Um, they step forward and they both shoot their crossbows. Did they basically follow exactly what Taimi did? Um, uh, you know, kind of jolted into action by your your shout. Um, so yeah, you can roll for Tapias and Taimi can roll for Anika. And in this case, um, this falls into Anika's wheelhouse. So Anika already has a plus one there. So Anika, you get, Anika will get plus two. Tapias will get a total of plus one. Oh, okay. that's because because she, she gets the benefit of the good night's sleep. Uh, no, sorry, they don't get that. Um, that's just oh. for PCs, but they get, she has a, a competent, competency level. Mm -hmm. um, Topias' is zero and hers is plus one if it falls within um, her areas of knowledge. So okay. a, daring, a daring go getter. What'd she get? She got uh, nine total. Okay. And Topias? 12. Oh. Nice shot, kiddo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Roll Topias' damage. Nice shot, kids. What, what is it, a D8? Heavy crossbow. Is that what it is, John? Is it a D8? It's a D8, yeah. Damn. Topias gets four with a two piercing. Okay. <clears throat> um, and Anika, um, see, for, for uh, shoot or throw, um, yeah, what's the next result? Mark off an ammo. Roll damage twice, use the lower roll, attract unwanted attention. Um, I think I think it would be in her character to attract unwanted attention. Okay. Um, then roll damage for her. Uh, she got three. She got three, so we got on top of the damage you already did. <laughs> okay, so um, there was that shout from Paiviki. Both of your companions step forward, <laughs> shoot the arrows in there, straight into its maw. Um, and your shout kind of the, all the noise you guys are making kind of echoes through the trees and you hear He's up too early. <laughs> oh. It's not necessarily unwanted attention from the creature. It's unwanted attention from anybody. Yeah, from anything. Oh, I'd especially if the creature is if the creature's job is to sit in the pit and eat what falls into it. <laughs> I can't really pay particular attention to Anika. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Ah, make it extra spicy. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, that worked, and now the branch is. Um, uh, it's now the branch is like splint, it's broken away from the tree and it's on its last little bit before it snaps off and falls into the pit. Um, so at this point I'm going to ask Mwirin what Mwirin does. Or are you just kind of holding on and hoping for the best? Oh, I wonder if Paiviki can Or try pulling herself up, um, and then if if it makes the branch creak more, then um, I'll tell her to stop, and then we'll think about what a better way is to get her out of that sinkhole. Um, I think that the what you can totally tell right now is the branch is about to go. Paiviki's wearing chainmail. I mean, Paiviki's pretty heavily laden not overburdened, but is pretty heavy hanging on to you. So the, if Paiviki even tried to like do this to like pull themselves up more, the branch would just snap off. 
Okay, and it's then that means kind of tenuous kind of thing right now. And so, like, um, it wouldn't even help to like tie a rope for Pybiki to try like um, latching rope to us or throwing something because I don't think I can move. It sounds like um, right. You got one hand on Pybiki and the other hand on the branch. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that um, at this point, uh, how far down is it into this mall? <laughs> it's about, um, so the, the, the ground is drowned away enough and the branch is about to break because you're, you're basically now freely dangling above it. And that's why the branch is about to snap. And from your feet to the thing, it's only about five feet to the, to the pinchers. Yeah. You got your spear in one hand and your yeah. other hand holding on to a mirror. Um, and uh, I think at this point, um, Paiviki is just going to uh, attack. <laughs> just go with the full on attack. Um, so she looks up at Moirin and says, um, Um, let go. And then she jumps down at the the beast and uh, goes for it with the two-handed spear. So you're not even jumping, you're just dropping right onto it, right? Like you're Yeah, like, I don't, there's nowhere to jump. I can't just jump. Like, so you say, yeah. let go. Where and do you let go? Um, I... I do. I will pause for a second, then I think <laughs> I trust my Vicky's instinct, and then I let her go. Right. There's a shot of your face <laughs> as you like hesitate, and then you let go, and my Vicky drops. Um, and uh, were you holding anything? No, because you had Marin's hand, and you yeah, did your shield. The piece has your shield, so it's just yeah. here, and you drop. Um, yeah, so again, you don't have to roll because you're dropping right onto it. You just have to uh, deal your damage. Does that spear have any piercing? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just a regular old spear. Um, I can check. Yeah, no, not on, in the marketplace list, it doesn't. Um, so I don't, have to, I don't have to roll, so I don't need to spend any metal to hit it right um there's other ways you can spend metal than to hit though but that's only if i roll a 10 or higher right uh oh yes Cor yes sorry yes correct it's been a while so uh, just as an interesting technical thing i can't get those benefits if i can't roll mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. oh that's a good point hmm and is the argument here that just like you I don't need to roll because it is it is stationary? Yeah, well, well, because the situation there's just basically no way that Pyviki could miss. It's not moving. Pyviki's a fighter. Um, you're right there. You're just dropping on it. So I would say that counts as a roll of ten or higher, right? Okay. Because otherwise, you'd be um, the creature would be you'd be rolling fight. Right. Yeah, so I guess, well, maybe this, no, because the creature can fight you back because you're dropping into its mouth. So I guess this yep. would be a regular fight roll. Okay. Because it might be able to actually damage you. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to make, it's going to be a regular fight roll, in which case, um, before you roll, you can spend metal, one metal to take plus one to that roll if you chose. Yeah, I would definitely do that. <laughs> um, I wonder... Just also, just another thing is there's that move that fighters have called no guts, no glory. Yeah. If this constitutes charging into battle against overwhelming odds or not. Oh, boy, that's a funny judgment call. <clears throat> You're definitely charging into battle. 
jumping into its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it literally could overwhelm you. Um, sure, yeah, I'll get, I'll give you that. That was that's really? a good line, but I, I'll buy it. Yeah, I think it's a great use of that. No guts, no glory. I mean, the title of the move is what you're doing. You're just dropping into the mouth of this thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so I'm gonna burn a wisdom, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to roll for that. <laughs> I got a two. For no guts, no glory. Oh, but I still get to, um, you get to it says I get to mark wisdom and choose one. Yep, yep. That's cool. That was worth a try. Um, <clears throat> I think that I'm going to take plus one armor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so boy, with your chainmail, that gives you three. Three. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and now you are going to roll to fight. Actually, you know, I think maybe I should take the plus one on going because that'll be more useful. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to get a plus one for that, a plus one for metal. And then I have a plus one for strength, so that gives me a plus three. Great. Which I probably will need. <laughs> All right, I got a five. Plus three is eight. So there's no way to get that to a ten. Um, with a. Yeah, luck gets you to nine. Yeah. So I got an eight. Okay. You deal damage, but suffer the enemy's attack as well. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So deal your damage with your spear, which is 1d8. And I still have metal, so I could do some kind of... Uh, um, moves on it that way too. So I did five. And um, I guess, can I strike hard and do a plus one to do six? You didn't roll a 10 or higher, so you can't revel in battle. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, so sorry, what was your damage you rolled? Five. Five. Whew. Wow. All right, Paiviki. <clears throat> roll 1d10 to see how much damage this thing does to you. <laughs> Okay. One. Yes! <laughs> so you drop down. <laughs> you stab it like right. Uh, actually, what you do is you go through one of the pinchers and then punch into the earth beneath it and strike some solid form underneath that. And when you do that, the pinchers uh, snap up around your, um, your arm, your arm, your hands that are holding the spear. So it just grabs you like uh, reflexively. And so right now, um, your spear is into it, the pinchers are on your arm, and like you can see the, um, the pinchers are serrated, and you can see them kind of uh, punch, trying to punch through the, um, the rings in your chain mail, right? So you can see them sort of pressing into the chain mail. And you've got the spear um, stuck uh, into its body. Nice. It is still alive. <laughs> uh, let me know, by the way, when the crossbow is reloaded. Oh man, I should have taken. I forgot my plus one forward too. For anyway, that's okay. Wait, plus one forward for 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 having a good night's sleep. Well, you oh, no, no, I used it. I used, used it. it. Yeah, yeah, you used it. Everybody's good night's sleep is being used up. Um, let me think. That happened. That happened. I, I'd say time. He's got the crossbow back in action now. All right. Um, so last time I didn't roll. Does that still mean I have my plus one good night's sleep? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm going to shoot now that you're in the mouth area, but I can see that your spear hit something hard. I'm going to shoot in that area, not like dead in the center. Cause I don't want to risk hitting you. Um, I'm following your orders. 
So I get a plus one. Nice. And then I get my good night's sleep plus one. Yeah. And then I get my three from Dex. <laughs> oh, damn. So you get a plus four. Max is out of plus four. Sweet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, that's 11. All okay. right. Um, I am going to use one of my metal to revel in battle and to strike true and ignore dex worth of armor. Okay, just to be clear, your crossbow already ignores two armor. Oh, never mind. Just to remind you of that, yeah. That yeah, would, no. That would make okay. them ignore five armor. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know enough about the game to know, like, what sort of armor is possible for, like, creatures. Yep. Um, I mean, you're a hunter, so certainly Taimi's evaluation, based on these, um, based on these, um, the things, the parts of it you can see, um, in Taimi's estimation, uh, and the, you know, Taimi's kind of instantaneous, instinctive estimation, which you don't even have to roll for because you're a hunter, is that these crossbow bolts can punch through that carapace. Okay, then I'm gonna use, instead use my one uh, metal to strike hard and add plus one for my strength to this damage. Okay. What about inflicting a condition? Uh, I don't could... think, it, I don't think, I mean like if we stun this thing, it's gonna let go of, if we stun this thing, it might not attack you. But my int is so low, <laughs> yeah, and like the, dur about. the duration of whatever I do to it is not going to be. I love that because it means that uh, Taimis doesn't usually to try to handicap things or do anything fancy. Taimis just like kill it. <laughs> hey, once I get my, I'm working on my intelligence. I'll right. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna yeah, I'm gonna strike hard, which gives you a bonus of what your damage. Uh, my strength, which is 13, so plus one. Okay, great. So roll your... Uh, oh, okay, six plus one is seven. Okay, and you're shooting the ground where the spear, away, a little bit away from, from Pivey. Yeah. There. Um, <laughs> um, there's a final convulsion of the pinchers on uh, Pivey's arm, and you can just feel that, like you can just feel it against your bone, and then... Um, <laughs> pinchers uh, uh, pop open um, and there's like a horrible smelling exhalation from the open maw of this um, of this creature and Pivy here down there um, with your spear stuck in his body and um, how, how does the ground settle when that thing is like it, when that thing is dead uh, most of it had sort of most of the draining had happened. So there's just like a little trickle of gravel and dirt as um, the final little trickle in there. Most of it had already kind of fallen into the cavity below. Um, Topias goes, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Shh, Topias. Didn't you hear the, the, the monster, the, the, the River King? <laughs> and you hear a <laughs> We gotta get out of here. <laughs> uh, I run over to help Paiviki dislodge her uh, spear. So you have to sort of jump down into the- From the carapace. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, you pull it out. It's got some kind of um, slimy icker on it. Can we, um, can we scramble out of the pit or do we need a rope or something? Uh, it's no, you can you can do it. The slopes are, you know, when you're slipping into the mouth of this thing, it's 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 particularly difficult. But now that most of it slid away, um, you know, it's a slope that you can scramble up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I take my water skin and I pour water on your spear um, to to get rid of the scent. Good idea. If this is something that the River King eats, he. Uh, uh, he might track you because of it. All right. Uh, thanks. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Let's cheese it. <laughs> Maybe we should go uphill away from the river. So just head that way. What do you guys think? Uh, Taimi votes yes. Okay. Gentle, gentle Muirin, sweet Muirin. 
Um, yes, but which way is that again? So to the west or the east? Um, where you are now, it's essentially, um, you know, looking at this map here, you'd basically go on this way to get directly away from the river uphill. Yeah, sounds good. That makes sense? Yes, I'm trying to think. Um, like so far away that you can't keep an eye, you don't want to keep an eye on the pit. Like just get out of sight, just get far away into the woods and then wait. Um, so when we saw the River King moving before, he seemed to move very leisurely. Uh-huh. I mean, when he was hustling, when he was going through the waterfall mist, was he moving any faster? Did we ever see him move fast? You No, you never saw him move fast. So it's either he moves slow or he just hasn't shown us how quick he can move. Mm -hmm. That's a fair um, announcement. So we could, what do you guys, I could be curious to see if he comes to the pit, but <laughs> can we try and hide? <laughs> And hide within basically and keep and, and so you can see the pit. Yeah, but be uphill and I mean he's so big, I don't know if we need to see the pit. I think we just need to kind of know like the pit is there. I imagine that we will s what are the tree height here compared to the River King height? Oh, the trees are bigger than him for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is some there's some old trees in this area. Yeah, yeah I don't think it's in, I don't think we need to see specifically the hole, just like enough to know when he is near the hole. If that makes sense, but uh, and that's just my thought. Yeah, well, if we know he's if we know he's coming up here, maybe we could try sneaking around him. <clears throat> uh huh. So make a wide arc. Yeah. Uh, if if he is moving this way, so do you wait to see signs that he's moving, or? Yeah, if he seems to be coming up here, we could start heading kind of up and back towards the waterfall. Hmm. Okay, so basically listening and watching the kind of upper trees to see if there's any movement of him passing, right? But not so close that you can see the pit. Is that correct? That sounds right. What do you guys think? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so some time goes by, you hear another, another one of his kind of moans um, in the distance. Um, you don't hear any sound, anything that sounds like anything is approaching further. You did hear an initial crash as something was clearly moving through the trees or underbrush. You don't hear anything else like that. Um, and then after a good 10 minutes, you hear a distant, the sound of him again, but further away. So he does not appear to have come um, too far into the woods. Um, what time is it? Is it dawn yet? Uh, you know, the sky is lightning. Yeah, it's, um, it's probably, you know, six in the morning, 5.30. I brought the conch shell along. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Like strapped to your back? In my backpack. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, I hadn't really tested it out. Um, did, uh, did we, uh, I mean, I, I didn't test it out before we set out on this expedition, but I assume that she tried blowing it before. Sure. Yeah. Can she do it? <laughs> Can Vicky do it? Yeah. Um, let's see. I think. Admaya would try to have tried to teach you how to do it. Yeah. And I think to pull that off would be, um, uh, I mean, you can either establish that you learned how to do it or we could just make a roll. Yeah. Basically make a saving throw. My thinking around this is that I wonder if it makes sense for us to actually station a lookout and have somebody below the, the conch shell. Oh, I mean, that's a stupendous idea if you can convince Topias to go along with it. <laughs> yeah. 
just to know that if the River King is coming back, um, that to get out of the cave or whatever. Oh, I see, I see. When you get, I don't know if like, anyone could even hear it though with the waterfall. That mm. would, that would be a concern. Um, you figure? I mean, I think you would. Uh, what's your intelligence again? Sixteen. Yeah, so I think Paiviki would figure if there is like some kind of interior, if there is a cave or a tunnel, if somebody was standing at the entrance and blew the horn into the cave, yeah. it would be, you could hear it. But if they were outside on the other side of the waterfall, it would be hard to hear unless like, for instance, maybe Topias would be stationed fully outside and Anika would be right at the mouth of the cave yeah. and the rest of you were inside, then you know that could set yeah. up a kind of um, right. alarm chain. Okay. Well, that's an option. Okay. They would also alert the River King that we were there. <laughs> <laughs> that is the other thing they would do. Come on they, home. Come home faster. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's just a thought. Uh, if if anything you have could be heard through the waterfall, it is that conk. <laughs> All right. Right. That's the thing. Um, that makes most yeah. Sense. Can I establish that I learned how to do it? um yeah we'll just say we'll just say you can it's not super hard and um okay. you know how to do it for sure and then i think what would happen is if you did leave it with topias or anika they would have to roll to successfully do it okay maybe more of a challenge for them um so i guess are we back on do we want to try and sneak around we survived unscathed. We're not we're not Bajnik, but <laughs> there's more than one way to steal treasure, right? What do you mean sneak around or go? Well, around? do we want to do we want to cancel the mission for the day, <laughs> or do we want to try to go anyway? Um, I mean, I think I think we're still on. Like, I don't think that us making a ruckus. As long as we can get eyes on him leaving, I think we're still on. Um, when we heard him the second time, I mean, I know that we aren't able to echolocate, but like, did we get a sense that it had gone back to kind of the basin of the waterfall? It had kind of like gotten a little closer and then like reversed course or? Um, I think your sense was that uh, that's that last sound he made was coming from further downstream. Oh, well then yeah, maybe maybe he's gone. He, did he? He seemed to holler like that when when he was just looking at rocks and stuff too, right? He seems to occasionally just moan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. So you're carrying on with the mission? Yeah. Okay. So cautiously, you make your way, um, I assume sort of circumscribing the, his last known location, right? Trying to stay away from that. That means getting closer to the cliff itself in the woods, um, in the established marching order. Um, you're now, the, the air is quite misty now as you're, um, so the trees are, you know, you know, the trees that are further away from you are harder to see as you make your way down towards the edge of the water. We were in very um, uh, carefully kind of like approaches in the underbrush and looks, peers out into the mist and visibility is not great, but there doesn't seem to be any indication of um, his majesty around. And sometime in there, you do hear a very faint from definitely from further away. So now you're at the edge of this enormous cascading um, waterfall and you're looking out um, along that, uh, you know, that cliff face, which is this, this kind of multiple ledges going up a great distance um, and the water um, falling down um, through the mist. So, and uh, people are a little cold and you're definitely wet at this point. Um, oh, and I should say you, found those rocks that pointed in the general direction. It wasn't It wasn't hard to um, locate them. So the next 
if you're going to follow where those rocks pointed, this is now either swimming or wading or trying to find rocks to cross on, that kind of thing. You have no um, water conveyance. So to get out, you, and basically the thing pointed more towards the middle of the waterfall. Um, that was the general direction. So it means going out into the river. Everybody cool with that? Um, I don't want to spend the time to like find a conveyance, you know, like search for like logs or something to make a raft or something. I think that time is going to be our friend. And if we just directly swim there, it's going to be hard, but I think that'll be the. I think the two choices assessing the situation are generally speaking, you can swim across or swim out to whatever the next kind of, you can see like little clumps of land out there, or you could climb up to the next ledge and try to cross, you know, you'd be crossing sort of wet, slippery rock with the waterfall, you know, trying to avoid the waterfall where possible. So you could sort of cross that way on the ledge or right across by swimming. The problem with swimming is um, we may um, get all of our torches and everything else wet. And then how are we going to explore if we're going to go into the, if there's a cave? Does the, when you get up on the ledge, do you get behind the waterfall? Uh, there are places where, yeah, you're either, you can either sort of behind it and then there's places where you have to kind of be in front of it and it's following. I mean, either way you're going to get wet, but at least up on the ledge, you won't get immersed. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a really, that's a really good point. Taimi and John Shooter didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. And the, the, so the torches are, pitch so they are water repellent but you do have like your tinder boxes and all that so clearly dampness and wetness would make it potentially harder to get them lit um, for sure yeah i don't like the idea of swimming with chain mail on either fair that's fair <laughs> but maybe we should get out a rope and uh have everybody hang on to it so that when we're scaling this cliff, if anybody slips, we can catch them. <laughs> okay, so a rope line, uh, climb up to the ledge and then crossing over towards the area where you think. So I have adventuring gear. Should I just mark off one of those? Uh, for the rope, sure. For rope? Uh, no, no, uh, doesn't Weirin have rope? I think I have a rope. All right. It's already there. Okay. Already yes, exists. thank you for reminding me. Okay. So, what is, uh, what's Pyvihi's dexterity? My dex? Yeah. Um, is 10. Okay. Totally average. Yeah, so between you and Tapias, that's you guys are the highest risk for crossing. So you'd be making, so when two or more characters are trying to avoid the same risk, which is whatever risks may befall someone crossing a, this wet ledge, um, uh, the character with the worst modifier rolls. So you and Tapias are tied for that. So it's just going to okay. be a straight 2d6 roll. Um, okay. A character not making the roll can still help if the judge agrees that it makes sense within the fiction. Um, yeah. So given that Paiviki and Tapias are both, this is a bit of a challenge for them. Um, uh, is there a way you guys can imagine helping them with this task? Um, and we're like climbing a ledge right now. So you, it's easy enough to get onto the ledge and now you're going to move out on the ledge past this all the cascading water to try to get out. Um, you know, it's probably a 50 yards out that you're trying to get. So the risk here is like this slippery, uneven ledge of broken rock that you're trying to traverse. The danger being that you could slip, somebody could slip and fall into the water um, below.
and it, I mean, it might not make any sense that anybody could really help. You do have the rope as other, a safety precaution. Right. Other than just they don't go first. Uh, and they can maybe follow, like, a safe, follow the leader. How strong is Mirren? Um, let's look. Eleven, so average. And Tiny is pretty strong, right? Yeah, Tiny's thirteen. So if Tiny was near Paiviki and Mirin was next to to Pius, at least you guys would be, you know, able to handle the people who fell. Um, as far as helping, though, doesn't sound like any. No. So um, let's have Paiviki roll. 2d6, um, no modifier. Man. I'm like, I'm like the buffer against you guys ever having to roll decks. <laughs> but, but this is, um, you're rolling for Tapias because he is the less experienced of the two. So he's the one that would actually fall if there's a problem. Oh, okay. oh no. Oh, no. That's, remember, that's what happened before when he broke his leg. Deja I know. Oh, I know. No. This is like a, a um, he's, he's having flashbacks from the earlier. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> like, oh, ropes, ropes and waterfalls are just not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, wow. My well, ankle feels great. I think I'm back at full health. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, um, I've gotten um, a bond with Topias. Great. Intentionally so that I could help him if he was in trouble. Can I use that for this role? Totally. Okay, so I'm gonna as mark as, as long as you're the person, as long as you, you know, it probably goes Mirin, Topias, you, Tiny, and then Anika in the rear. So okay. yes, you're, you're next to Topias, so you could totally use that to help him. I'm rolling with the plus one then. I rolled a six, so that makes it a seven. <sighs> yeah, so, um, uh, Um, what's he carrying? He's got your shield and a hatchet. Yeah. He's got the hatchet put away so that he can hold on to the, in fact, he's got a shield on strapped on his back too. So he's holding the rope with both hands and carefully making his way. And he's definitely anxious. And you see him like looking over and there's one point where he kind of slips a little bit and then um, um, catches himself on the rock and continues on. And then he steps on a, particularly mossy stretch and um, uh, slips and uh, hits the ground and pulls the rope taut between um, Weirin and Paiviki and um, is about to plunge over into the water below. Oh, Are his feet on the rock still? Uh, no, his, his, his uh, like one of them, like his, uh, let's see, he's doing this, he slips, um, hits the rock with his butt and then is sort of sliding one of his legs is over the ledge and he's basically you know he's about to go and you know you guys are holding on to the rope but he's about to go he's about to go because he's about to lose his grip yeah um i would just reach out and try to grab him and pull him up okay or Moirin, do you have another? I've been doing a lot. Do you have another plan? No, but I think I do have a bond with him. I just didn't write it down on that. Uh, let me just double check that it, this is a real thing. Um, yeah, so if you want, I can also help. I think grabbing him is probably just the simplest thing to make sure he doesn't... Yeah, so if Paviki goes to grab, um, and you just burned your bond with him. Yeah. You managed to save Durbin last time, too. I think I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, too. All right, so you're going to roll. And this is, again, a dexterity roll. 
because you're trying to move quickly. The strength is not a problem because you're strong. You're just trying to move quickly to grab them. And I guess if Mirren is acting too, actually, so Mirren's faster. Yeah. Right. So what would be the, um, is there a way that I could, could um, Paiviki help me with yeah. the role? Or yeah. is that? Because of the, because okay. of the, you guys are both having the rope and you're both, you're basically both trying to grab him, but one of you has to make the role. So it okay. makes more sense for you as the person with the, who's faster. Um, and with the bond with Topias. Right. I don't remember. Games, how I got games it. and dungeons. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Who's bringing teeth into dungeons again? <laughs> <laughs> Always um, using and slipping and slipping again. <laughs> he's he's just a little clumsy. Um, okay, so <laughs> my, <laughs> one, two. So this would be a plus four roll if I if we so we're both gonna yeah. you're gonna help we're gonna grab him before he slips all the if, way. If you yeah. burn your your burn you burn your bond right so yeah you got your bond you got um, Paiviki helping and your plus two for Dex yeah so plus yeah. four. Uh, cool. Eight plus four. Okay. Is okay. Twelve. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so you both lunge, grab him. He like looks up at you, <laughs> like you know, Paiviki. You see his face framed against you know the water, um, thirty feet below, um, and then simultaneously, um, you know, you guys exchange a glance, embrace yourselves, and simultaneously you haul him back onto his feet. Um, and he um, doesn't say anything. He just kind of like um, uh, grabs onto the rope. Um, and kind of recommits to the to the task. All right. After a, you know, he catches his breath, um, and then you finish you finish the traversal, and you uh, there's a point where the ledge sort of breaks, stops, and you can't go any further. So you and this is roughly the area where you think um, the River King had gone, and you're able to get down off the ledge onto a. Um, a kind of islet of land, rocky, grassy land with some trees on it. And from here, so you just kind of crossed one stretch of the river and now on this little plot of land, you're looking out over another stretch of the river. And from here, from the edge of this little plot of land, um, you see the, the water cascading and there is a place where um, between two of these um, sheets of curtains of water, you see about a, 30 or 40 foot high uh, opening in the rock, just like a giant natural uh, cave mouth um, that's very uh, elongated. Um, so everybody's kind of catching their breath and um, everybody's soaking wet, wiping their brows. Anika's kind of like, uh, you know, making some kind of jokey comment to Tapias, but not loudly and kind of clapping on the back. Um, we're in and Taimi and Paiviki are, um, you know, checking out the whole situation in front of them. Um, we're just about to call it because it's getting close to midnight. Um, and then Taimi notices, um, or no, we're in notices and gestures that past the cave opening from the angle you're looking. Um, it almost partly, you know, mostly almost obscured by the mist. There's a, a, a ledge about five feet above the level of the water. And um, there's movement on this ledge. So we're in kind of gestures and you guys are all peering through the mist and you see um, a spider Oh yeah, and there's a, um, you see a spider about this big, oh. um, kind of crawl out from, I don't know, there's like a gap in the rock or something. It just sort of like crawls out onto the ledge. Um, and then um, the wind picks up and a little web parachute comes off of the spider's back um, and picks it up off the ledge and it um, drifts away uh, down river. <laughs> uh, 
Mm. Oh shit. It's a messenger. We're fucked. Does he seem to see us? <laughs> What's that? Does he notice us? Um, well, it's hard to say what a spider notices or doesn't notice. There wasn't anything in his behavior that made you think it noticed you. Um, it appeared to be, it's far enough away, and it, the way it emerged from the rock and then sort of took to the air was sort of like as one motion. So it wasn't like it, like there was a moment where it might have noticed you and then reacted. So unclear whether it was in some kind of response or whether it was just doing its thing. Uh, I, uh, I hesitated. I feel like, yeah. Oh, yeah, shot. right. You can take, <laughs> you can can take, take a, shot? a shot. You can take a shot if you want. I'll take a shot. <laughs> wow. Um, so there it is. It's like it's picked up the air. It's drifted off the ledge. It's going past the trees. Tiny. Fuck, fuck spiders. <laughs> <laughs> With the crossbow, huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, it's just a seven. Okay. Uh, so I will what, lose one ammo. Sure. Uh, and I will roll my D8. Five. Okay. Um, so you track it. Um, um, it's drifting along. Um, and its legs just kind of frantically do this for a little while. And then it's a dead spider being carried away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We could have just been sitting in a Ken Burns documentary, just <laughs> like the majestic waterfall spider, you know, like <laughs> sets its parachute. <laughs> and then, but don't. So, but I think the arrow goes all the way through it. Yeah, the arrow doesn't stick in it, it just goes through it, and it just goes like that, and then it just kind of like clunk, and then drifts away. Finally, Tiny got in some sweet, sweet archery. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty pumped. Okay. Uh, but only, I gotta mark my ammo. We could have you shooting all all the NBCs that we meet. <laughs> well, I was I was um extremely frustrated that I didn't shoot the um what do you call it the trees. That's like that's all I was thinking. Like when we were arguing, like oh, do we go near them? Do we go far away? I was like, I should have shot them. I should have just like Shoot. when I was with Annika, she wouldn't have thought any worse than of me. <laughs> I should have just shot those trees. And so then when the, when you're like, the hole is sucking, John didn't actually think that there was something in the hole, but Taimi was like 100% convinced that there was something in the hole. So what do I know? That, <laughs> that was freaking things. awesome. I, I hadn't gone there. I was like, I think it's just a sinkhole. No, I mean, like, we're in this kind of marshy, like, riverside. <laughs> like, yeah, I think that she genuinely doesn't think that that's how the terrain would operate, but also she... Wanted to shoot a hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. That was pretty Quit, sweet. Great not thinking. Or <laughs> yeah, that was the opposite of our usual deliberating. <laughs> um, great. Okay. So here you are. You're standing before what appears to be the um, entrance to the lair of the River King. And we will wrap up. Um, alignment goals. I don't think so. I don't know. What do you guys no. think? No. Chaotic, chaotic, no. lawful. Mm -mm. Um, no order. Uh, traits. I was bold. You were totally bold. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dropped on yeah. that one. Yeah. Um. I. I feel like it's so easy for me to claim curious all the time because I'm like an inquisitive person, but I think that cheater this time because I had no reason to shoot a spider. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, here, that was just cheating. <laughs> <laughs> totally, yes, you can get XP for that. Um, I feel like uh, I feel like Moyern was respectful of the trees for sure. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I did want to touch them and harvest the branches but when i realized that it could be a grave respect thing or yeah a burial thing great so you get xp for that um fighters mark xp if you solve the problem with physical prowess done thief mark xp if you solve the problem with stealth or trickery uh i don't think that came up 
didn't have much of an opportunity. Well, she was she was leading the party to sneak up on the River King, but I don't know if right. falling into a I don't know. I, no, 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 no. She solved the she solved the the problem of you getting eaten by a sarlacc. That's true. Um, it's just but, not but stealthy, right? Trickery. But the, the the thing I do think was stealthy is that you solved the problem of navigating a forest at nighttime. Mm. That's what mm. I meant, mm. right? Like, like, mm. yeah, like, like you let were able because of, you were able to lead everybody. So yes, you get a point for that. Okay. Cool. Did you make an exciting discovery? Several. Yeah. <laughs> Strange trees, giant ant lion, um, doorway to the River King's lair. Oh, yeah. Did you overcome a difficult obstacle? Yes. Uh, did you acquire some memorable booty? No. Right? Oh. No. No, just a conch shell. But that's not really booty. Right. It's a, in theory, it's a gift. If you choose to keep it, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, that's ding. That's level for me. Yeah? Is everybody else close? I'm one away. Oh. Um, so if you get to the end, do you get to level up? Yes. Okay. Then I did also. You did. And, and poor Paviki is one XP behind. Oh, <laughs> no. no. The way the rules are now, do you ever gain XP during a game? No. It's oh no, no. Feet. There are some rules. Yes, there are some. There are a few rules that if you roll a six or less, you do get XP. Like um, establish. Yeah, like uh, no establishing mark intelligence. That's a misprint of oh. old rules. Um, yeah, yeah, and you got to figure out how you can how you can make that happen. I'm just giving a quick look through right now to see. Yeah, I can't find it right now. I think there's okay. maybe one move that does that. No problem. Um, uh, okay. So leveling up. Uh, increase your level by one. Ding. Cool. Regain luck equal to your new level. Yeah. If your new level is even, which it is, choose a new advanced move from your playbook. You don't have to choose that now, but I'm curious if you had already thought about what you were going to take. Um, you guys think about it. Yeah. yeah. Take your time. No rush. All right. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that feels interesting is like burn wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just don't have. You could take another favorite weapon. Yeah, I thought about that. Taking it as the crossbow, um, but I mean, all that would do would allow me to add metal to to hit, because revel in battle doesn't require your weapon to be a favorite weapon. Right. Oh, right. Yep, that's right. Um. Yeah, I thought about taking master weapon uh i don't know so yeah some of the other ones just aren't really applicable what do you have right now second skin yeah i have second skin um i mean the only yeah the only benefit to be taking favorite weapon would just be to like to have the privilege of adding a yeah 
and uh, adding a metal. It's current. Oh, your metal is equal to current level plus one. Oh, I have to keep track of that. Yeah, I'll think yeah. about it. That's right, your okay. metal. And Donna, your cunning goes up by one point. Awesome. Oh, I think when we talked, to, I remember a while ago, we were talking about advanced moves. And mm -hmm. John and I were both talking about what if there were, I know this is stretching, but what if there were any advanced moves that you could take that were kind of general advanced moves or something like that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right, right, right. Like a separate little um, play card that you can insert in your playbook that had general moves on them. Yeah, you had that one in the um, in the other book that had like the four different things, like the dungeon crawler and the leader and the yeah. That was kind of interesting. Yeah, that's certainly um, something that I could consider doing now. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so is Tricks of the Trade considered an advanced move? or Because that's on the left side. Uh, oh, if yeah. you're going to get a new expertise, yeah, that counts as a, um, you, could, you could choose a new expertise as an advanced move, yeah. Cool. Are you thinking about one? Yeah, there, it seems really cool, but... What? Gosh. Well, you could choose stealth, acrobatics, Ooh. locks, traps, treasure, disguise, negotiation. Yeah, John, have you thought about multi-classing as a thief? Uh, yeah, maybe. I, you know, I'll take a look at the thief playbook. Yeah, that would be amazing because then you could do all those things <laughs> yeah it's awesome that's true yeah you get all of the all of the moves right you get the basic thief moves and then you could choose an expertise um which would be a special area for you to do stuff murder <laughs> <laughs> there's an assassinate <laughs> when you do the murder yeah that's it yeah i'll just be like a sniper but you already get a backstab move <laughs> So that's the defense. That's that's that would have worked in that spider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a hand. It's a hand weapon move. I mean, I definitely like. I yeah. like the crossbow, but this fight really kind of solidified why it's. Uh, I I didn't want. I don't want to do favored weapon crossbow. I don't want to waste a move on that because yeah. ultimately I want a longbow. I want that D eight damage, but I want something that I can like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> with the sound effect. <laughs> Tony <laughs> yeah, makes the sound effect as she shoots too. What um, what multi class are you taking, Paviki? Well, I'm going to take um, uh, multi class as a wizard when I get a chance to. Oh, okay, that'll be the official. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Certificate. You've really been working uh, towards that too. I'm working towards my diploma. <laughs> 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 I've been studying at lock school. So the, the school of hard locks? <laughs> all I need is to finish my last paper and I turn it in and then I get <laughs> my final project. Maybe I'll get it to complete it while I'm inside the, uh, the River King's cave. Yeah. yeah. I wondered whether you could have caught Piveki. You didn't have access to Weave of Force yet, did you? Well, I think that the, it's a fuzzy line and that Paviki could totally try to do that, um, but without the advantages that being an actual magic user has, right? Like, it, it's harder, it's more risky to pull off without making that leap. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, everybody good for next week? Uh, yeah, let me double check. Thursday, though, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's right. It's Friday today. It's Friday. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, this should be fine. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, Thanks. nice Thank work. You, Jason. That was exciting. Did not expect any of those things to happen. <laughs> me neither. Great job, everyone. The yeah. lesson is to shoot holes, you know? It's <laughs> <laughs> hard to argue with that. <laughs> All right, good lesson.
All right. Uh, good night, guys. See you next Good week. night.